Hi there people, 23rd of December today and then tomorrow is the last vlogmas. <laughs> How has that even happened? But yeah, we're we're near the end guys. I know a lot of you have actually been commenting and saying, oh, what are we going to do when vlogmas ends? <laughs> I don't know myself to be honest. Well, I do in a way, I'm going to have a nice rest <laughs> for a start off. But I'm going to try and record a makes video in between Christmas and New Year. So hopefully I will get something up and running if I get time. Because we've kind of had this week and a half where we're trying not to plan too much. And then things have started creeping in. So we've only got a certain amount of days that are free now. Oh. So yeah, it is... What day are we on? Friday. Friday. Christmas Day is on Sunday. My plan of attack today, because we literally don't have any plans, is I've got a load of jobs to do around the house. So I'm going to get all of those done first so that that is done. And then I want to have to finish the kids' pyjamas. So I've done the pyjamas. I just literally need to put the elastic through. So I'm going to do that because I want them to have them for Christmas Eve, so for tomorrow night. And I'm going to finish my Zadie. So they're the two things that I want to get done today from a sewing perspective. Husband has randomly decided that he's going to take everything off every surface in the kitchen, scrape all the sealant out and reseal everything in our kitchen. Because that's just what we need, isn't it? Two days before Christmas. <laughs> that's that's the difference between my priorities and my husband's priorities. But if he wants to do it, I'm like, crack on, because I don't want to do it. So I'm more than happy. So I'm just sat this morning having a little cheeky peppermint tea with my B&M mug. I'm wearing my boxy tea, Florence boxy tea by size me sewing and on the bottom, ha ha ha, I've got my Hudson pants. <laughs> so I'm kind of coordinating because I'm kind of in blue. Does that count? But I'm just, yeah, lazing about today and doing jobs, so it doesn't really matter. And I've got these gorgeous earrings. I know you've probably heard me mention sapphire frills before, but um, I've got these earrings in today, which match really nicely with my top. Um, I've washed and done my hair today because I've got my brother and sister-in-law and my side of the family coming over for a bit tomorrow. So then when I get up in the morning, I'm not going to have to do much. <laughs> Method in my madness. So, shall we do the second to last advent calendar opening? I think we're going to have to, aren't we? Let's do first some fabrics because it's on the top. 23, no problem in trying to find it today. <laughs> Ooh, it feels weird. What is that? No, it feels bendy. Like a piece of rubber. <laughs> what could that be? Let's have a look. Oh, that's because it's elastic. <laughs> Some prim elastic. Oh, it's transparent elastic as well. I love this. I know we've talked about this before, haven't we? About I quite like it in um if you have to put it in the shoulder seams to stabilise your seams so that it doesn't um mess you about. I mean, obviously you can use it inside a seam. We keep that on the actual picture, it's inside one, but I would normally just put that to stabilize because elastic, it then goes with any color as well. Um, clear, transparent one. So that is 10 millimeter, so a centimeter wide. Lovely, that's going in my stash. Right, and then let's do Beyond the Pink Door. <laughs> oh, 24 looks quite big actually. Looks quite a, a fat package. All right, 23. This is another bit of haberdashery, I think, because it's got a plastic thing on it. Oh, sticker's beautiful again today. Look at that. How cute is that? Feels awful just get ripping the stickers. Anyway. Ooh. Oh. Well, I've never seen one of those before. A needle threader with magnifying glass. So, with magnifier to assist by enlarging eye of needle. That's fantastic. So, this is what shows you the kind of thing on the back. So, you can actually use the magnifying glass. I'm going to keep that and I'm going to give it to my mum because she does use needle threaders all the time because of her eyesight. And I'm wondering whether this might um, help her as well. So, I'm going to put that to one side, give that to my mum. She's going to love that. Isn't she lucky? Hey, isn't she lucky? I get free cardigans and she gets a 
magnifying needle threader. <laughs> hey, I'm generous. Right, so I'm going to get off now. <clears throat> oh, I did just want to let you know that I had some beautiful post come through as well from Lorianne. So hi, Lorianne, if you're watching on your amazing holiday, which I'm not jealous of at all. Um, but yeah, you might have seen this on some other people's channels, but this is a card that's been handmade and this is all sewn in different shades of blue. It's absolutely beautiful. So this has come all the way from Lorianne and Larry over in Oregon. So, and I do have a little letter here that I've read as well. So thank you very much, Lorianne. I really do appreciate that. And I think I might be keeping this and putting it in my sewing room. It's too good to go downstairs. So thank you very much. Um, right, that's it for me now. I am going to try and do the button, self-covered button tutorial later today, if I get chance. But like I say, I've got a lot of jobs to do, so we will see, but I will try and get that done if I can. So I'll catch up with you again a bit later. Bye. Hello, so are we ready for, get ready, lunchtime tutorial. We're gonna have a bash at it today. Um, it's so dark in here. Um, it's raining, cats and dogs outside. So I've shut my blind. I've put my serious lights on because they give me loads of light. Um, and we're just gonna give it a go. Um, so this is what we received in our Beyond the Pink Door advent calendar. So this is the actual button maker. And then we also got some buttons, which I've taken mine off now, but these are the 15 millimeter self cover buttons. So, <coughs> excuse me, there are instructions on here how to use them. And there's several different ways you can do this. You can do self covered buttons without a maker. You do not need a maker. It just makes it easier. Um, so you can do it three different ways. You can do it on your own without a maker i'll maybe try and show you that another time but it's it's really quite simple you can use the button maker as it is or if you go online and you actually watch the instructions for the hemline one they do a combination of both so when you are making a self-covered button without a maker you do a very long stitch all the way around your circle of fabric and then draw it in to make it really tight around the button however um, on this button maker, you don't have to actually do that. But the instructions, the official instructions, when you watch the tutorial, do the actual stitches around the circle of fabric as well as using the button maker, which is quite interesting. Maybe that just gives you a slightly neater look. I don't know. But I've just made one before I start here. And here is my little button. Now, this is the other thing to take note of because I've got my ring light on then because these are metal. Can you see you can actually see through this fabric? If you want to prevent that from happening, it looks worse now because I've got my ring light on, but when you kind of put it over here, you don't really see it as much. You can use two layers of fabric to stop being able to see through. So that's just an important thing to know. Oh, she says, chucking it all over. So, button maker buttons. And on the back of your buttons, it gives you here, on this piece of card at the back, all the different dimensions of the different buttons. But on this pack, it's just 15 millimetres. So I've cut out the 15 millimeter, very roughly, as you can tell, rough and ready, how many times can I say that? I've cut that out on the cardboard here. And then all I've done is got a piece of scrap fabric and I've cut that out of my scrap fabric. So that's what you would need to do. Sometimes you can get packs with all different sizes on, in which case you wouldn't want to necessarily cut this out. You'd want to probably trace it, put it onto a separate piece of card. I know what a lot of people do is trace these all the different sizes, put them onto a piece of card, scribble on them what millimetre they are, cut them all out and have those just in their stash ready to be able to use. But I've just cut that out of this one because there was no other ones on this um, packet. So inside you've got two pieces as well. So you've got a front, which is this piece here, and you've also got a back, which is this piece here. So I've got one each of those, I've got my piece of fabric. The other thing that I think is quite handy to have is a chopstick and I'll show you why. And then we've also got the maker. Now I've already got one of these. This is actually a prim one that I already had. Uh, the one that we've been given is a hemline, but they look, sorry, ring light's dreadful. Uh, they look identical, so they're not, they're not much different. So I'll show you the one that I've got. Right, so what I'll do now is I'll angle my, um, phone 
down onto this workbench here so that you can see things in a bit more detail. Okay, so the only other piece of equipment I've got is an hammer. If I had an hammer. Um, and you'll see why I always think it's best to do that. So here is the bottom of your button maker. Here is your piece of fabric and here is your button. So it's this part that you want first. Now with this piece of fabric, obviously I've got two sides. You have to find the size that matches your button. So we are a 15 millimeter button. So you can see they've got all different sizes. So I want this one here and this is the top, okay? So what you do is you find whichever is the right side of your fabric and you lay that right side over the size that you want and try and make sure that it's as central as possible, okay? Then you're going to put this piece here, so the nice round flat side downwards so that this little bit here, if you can see it, will be sticking up. So pop it on there and then push it in, okay? And it's got on the inside of it little grippers. I'll show you on a different one. I don't know if you'll be able to see this here, but it's got little grippers all the way around the inside of this, which is great. Now, use your um, chopstick to just push it down nicely into the section. So can you see that there? Sorry, the light is not very good at all, but we'll go with what we've got. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push all these excess pieces of fabric over and into the little teeth that are inside. OK, so it's really easy to do that with a chopstick. You push down these pieces of fabric onto the little teeth that are actually inside. And I'll show you again what that looks like when I've done it. And that just helps to grip the fabric nicely inside so that none of it pops out when you then put the back on. So I'm just pushing that and tucking it underneath those feet. So can you see inside now? Let's see if I can get a bit of better light on that for you. How's that? Is that a bit better? I'm not quite sure if it is. <laughs> but you can see there that the teeth have now grabbed all of that fabric inside. Okay, now, then you have your back piece here. Now, you could put it this way or you could put it that way, but you want the flattest side on the top. Okay, so I've just got one here. So you've got like a bumpy side on the bottom and a flat side on the top, and you want that to be on the top. And you'll see there's a little slit on the inside and you want that to pop over the little piece inside of your button. So I'll pop that in there like that and you'll be able to see what I mean. So now it's clipped over the top of this little piece that sticks up and it's ready in place. So all we do now is we get our 15 millimeter one and we pop it over the top, okay? And then we get our hammer. This is the exciting bit. So you need to think about somebody you don't like or, you know, like if your husband snored last night, this is a great way of getting rid of frustration. And you just give it some really sharp taps. And what that helps it do is it helps this piece here go underneath the grippers that are on the inside. So take this off. And you'll see inside there, look that it's all together. And then all you do is you pop this out like so, and there is your little button. Yay! So what do we think? I think these are a really good way of using up scrap fabric and I also think they'd be a lovely, lovely gift. You know, sometimes where, say you've got a really nice posh fabric and, you know, like a Liberty print or something like that and you've only got very small scraps left that you couldn't make anything else with, keep them and make little self-covered buttons. And I think as well, these would make a beautiful little gift all wrapped up for someone, particularly in our community, you know. The other good thing that I didn't mention actually as well within this is 
say for example you've got um, some fabric that's got a pattern in it so we'll take the polka dots for example you'll see here I've got a polka dot on that one but on that one not so much but if you had something that had like a little pattern on it on the back side here as well when you pop your fabric in to start off with there is a hole on the other side so you can see if you have um, centered your design that you might want on here so say you had a fabric that had a lovely really cute little ditzy flower on it and you wanted those on each of your buttons you can center them on the inside before you pop this on and then you'll know whether they're actually in the middle or not yay so the other way that i was going to talk to you about um is actually you all you do for this one is you get a hand needle you get your piece of fabric let me just grab a piece let me do another circle and show you. We'll do this real time, shall we? Oh, we'll do it real time because I'm not prepared. You know me. I'm just drawing a little circle round now and then I'm going to cut it out. And then I'll show you how to do it if you don't have a button maker. Because I'm sure there'll be plenty of people watching this that maybe didn't have the calendar. So I've just drawn another circle. Because obviously you can buy the buttons just on their own. And I never used to have a button maker. So this is how I used to do it in the first place. So you just spin it around so you've got your piece like this and then you get a piece of thread oh i've got one already there look Ooh, that was a bit handy wasn't it and you i'll just tie a little knot in the bottom of it you do a long stitch all the way around the inside so a little gathering almost stitch hand gathering stitch little stitches all the way around. I'll try and show you this way. Look, I'm a bit close now, aren't I? Um, little gathering stitches all the way around this circle. Oh, you'll probably be able to do my kids. They're all arguing downstairs, but I'm just going to stay out of it, stay up here and do this with you instead. Uh, so yeah, little stitches all the way around. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished because I don't think I'm giving the most amazing uh, demonstration here. But, you know, that's me. I like to do things real time and just wing it. <laughs> so little stitches all the way round till you get back to the beginning. Like so. So pull that through. So all I've done, I don't know if you can see this or not, is I've done little running stitches all the way around the inside of that. Don't think you can, but you can see already that it's starting to curve up yeah so then what you do is you get your button you pop it inside she says trying to do it now and then you pull this and all your stitches crowd around the inside of the button and then you can do the same thing push all the bits over so they grab onto the teeth like so she says and then get your button top. Just use another little stitch in there just to secure it in place before you get rid of it. There we go. Snip that off. Probably should have done a much better demonstration of this, but it was just a spur of the moment thing. Pop your little button piece over the top. And then I'll just give that a little whack with my hammer without trying to bash my fingers. Let's do that bit on camera, <laughs> so you don't see me injure myself. All I'm doing is tapping round the edges. I've got my concentration face on. I have, haven't I? Um, tap it around all the edges until it grips onto that fabric. And there you have it. Another button. All done. So you don't have to have a button maker, but it does make it easier. And I think it also makes it neater um because you know your stitches and that can sometimes make bumpy edges i think i've been quite lucky on this one but sometimes oh i don't know if you can see there look one of the edges is a little bit sticky out a technical term so you can do it without a button maker but i think it does make it easier so there we go what do we think yay okay so i'm joining you a little bit later because ta-da she's finished the zady is finished i haven't tried her on 
since quickly trying her on earlier just to see about the leg length. Um, it is quite short in the length again in my leg, but I actually quite like it like that. So turning over the cuffs was a bit of a mare. I'm not going to tell the lie because the fabric is so thin, but it's beautiful. And I'm thinking for holiday as well, it would be really nice in an evening. So yeah, I might wear this on Christmas Day. I think that's what I'm going to do anyway, but I'm really, really chuffed with it. Ah! And, and then I've just finished the boys' pyjamas. So I have put the elastic in they're all ready look at these little tags that I got from little rosy cheeks that say you deserve to dream so Ollie's have got red trim on them this is so that I know whose is whose and Jack's has got black trim so when they go in the wash and then in the tumble dryer you know what I'm saying I can just get them straight out and I know whose is whose so I'm really pleased with these they look fantastic and obviously these are with fabric that I got from Beyond the Pink Door last year. The Blue Trees fabric that came in this um, year's subscription box. I think I'm going to put away for now because I'm not going to get anything made in time for Christmas. And I'm thinking I might make their pyjamas next year in that fabric. So I don't think next year with them being even bigger, I'll be able to get two pairs of pyjamas out but I'm thinking if I do maybe um like a mixture of another contrasting colour with it I might be able to do it or I do one of the boys in that and one of the boys in another fabric that I buy <laughs> who knows so that's me done for today and then tomorrow dun 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 it's the last day of vlogmas so I'll sign off now and I'll see you again tomorrow bye